everyone. It's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio. It's July 2019 and I am doing my animal portrait for the month. I've been trying to do one since uh, the beginning of the year, January every month. And last, last month I asked for suggestions of animals that people would like to see. The most uh, popular suggestion was zebra, but I've already done a zebra on my channel and I will put a link up in the iCard on the right hand side to the video and also I'll put a photo right here. So another interesting suggestion that I got and the one that I took is from Karen and so she suggested a platypus and then over on Facebook she tagged me on a video of this platypus and it basically it's the caption said something like a platypus is just a water puppy and it was this super cute little animal flipping and flopping around and spinning around um kind of like maybe like an otter a little bit how they play in the water and you know go down slides and things but what a cute animal and to my knowledge i don't think i've ever seen one they live in australia um i'm not really sure exactly what they look like so I took my very simple drawing from a free coloring page that I saw online. I didn't print it or anything. I just looked at it. I figured it could be a, a, sim a pretty simple shape and not a whole lot of detail. I know they're covered with a type of fur um, that keeps them warm and dry so it's shiny and so the, the water um, the light reflects off the water, the light reflects off the animal, and a lot of, has a lot of highlights and things. I know that they like the water. Uh, they're semi-aquatic mammals, so I guess they swim in the water some of the time, and other times they're up on the land. They're found in small rivers and streams in only eastern Australia. That's the only place that you could find this animal, unless maybe it's in um, a zoo or something in the United States. But in the wild, that's the only place you're going to find it. Um, it's it's uh, got a duck bill, a duck bill mouth. Uh, its tail is flat and kind of um, like a muscle, like a beaver. If you've ever seen a beaver, they have flat tails that they can slap on the water. Um, strangely, it lays eggs. It doesn't have live birth like most mammals. And um, like I said before, its fur is like an otter. It's uh, insulate, it insulates it, keeps it warm and also repels water. So super interesting animal, <laughs> very different. Um, didn't know much about it until I, I looked it up after Karen suggested it. So that's what I'm making today is a platypus. So I made the, the very simple drawing at kind of an outline. And then I'm using different colors of browns in lighter and darker tones to try to create a fur-like lo um, look to the animal. I'm doing this um, on a piece of deli paper. I've traced the shape that I drew on my page and then um, doing all the, the paper painting, putting the different colors of, of paper on the deli paper, then I'm going to cut it out and glue it down to the page. You've seen me do this lots of times. This is a shortcut that I take when I'm paper painting, when I'm not making a huge, big, formal paper painting. This is an art journal page, um, so I'm not like real concerned about super hard, difficult underpaintings and details. And you know, it's, it's more just, it's about doing it in my journal. The journal I'm using is a gel print journal that I made and it's it, the pages are attached together with a, a knotting um, process. There's a video where I make it on this channel. I'll try to remember to link that one too um, in the I card above on the right hand side. Um, I I ha I found a page that was I was when I was printing with different leaves and things. So it's kind of got um, watercolor not watercolor, but the color of water um, background with kind of these different leaves, like it's maybe floating in it, like maybe it's a river. And I wanted to make the platypus be in diving in the, in the river because what they eat is usually 
they dig it up from the bottom of the river or stream with their duck bill by just kind of using it like a shovel. And they ha they like uh, worms, insect larvae, shrimp, crawfish, stuff like that. And then when they're digging it up from the bottom, then they, they catch it and they have mouth pouches like squirrels <laughs> where they can fill up their cheekers <laughs> and they put it in there and then come back and eat it on land. So just interesting, fascinating creature. Very different from the creatures I'm used to. So in my drawing, it's the platypus is, draw, is diving, which makes it kind of a strange position now that when I start, when I was editing the pictures, I started to think it kind of looked like a dolphin because <laughs> a brown dolphin, because it was of the way it's shaped and it was diving down. I was trying to give it the kind of the curve as if it's diving down, pro propelled by its tail and um, getting something yummy at the bottom of the river. So yeah, if it's confusing, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm continuing to put the colors where I think they are based on a photograph I was looking at. Looks like they have dark brown or black um, duck bill faces and then their little webbed feet are also that dark color as well as um, maybe the underside of the tail. I couldn't quite tell but then um, the body is rounded so I was trying to get a highlight at the top where the light would be shining and then it looked as if there might be a lighter color for under the belly um, it's kind of it's kind of all one color, but what you're seeing, I think, is mostly like the highlights and shadows from the wet reflective fur, the way it light the light shines off it. So that's what I was trying to do with my paper, just trying to make it look more rounded and and that um, highlight at the top. So not using really small pieces though. I could have went in much more detail. Uh, for a blender paper, I sometimes, when I'm using browns or neutrals, I like to use a tea bag paper. Like if there's a place where it's kind of harsh, it, maybe there's too much of a line of demarcation between the colors, I sometimes will put this tea bag paper over it and just kind of mellow it out a little bit so that you don't have a line. So that's what I'm doing right now. I sort and store my colored paper scraps in these plastic boxes that are um, reused from many cinnamon rolls that they sell at our local grocery store. And I have them sorted by colors, uh, you know, reds, greens, yellows, blues, um, light blue, dark blue, pink, red, orange, peach. It's, it's all sorted out so that I can grab them and use them anytime I want. So I went ahead and cut out the shape and I had put some uh, Stabilo All pencil on there so that I could see the design uh, to trace it onto the deli paper because it was too light with just the pencil. So I wiped that off because I, I wanted to kind of reposition it a little bit over more to the right hand side um, and more kind of like curved so that it's diving down. Then I needed to make uh, some plants that would be in the river or stream maybe uh, kind of like seaweed but um, maybe they have bulbs on the ends I don't know just trying to fill in the page and make it look more dynamic and interesting interesting by having these other shapes so I got my box of greens and I'm just cutting long thin strips and then trying to make a rounded part at the end as if it had maybe some juicy bulbs on the end. Um, the platypus wouldn't eat the plants. It's, it's, a, it's a carnivore, so it eats meaty things, but um, maybe they just looked interesting to it. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe there's a crawfish down there under the weeds that you can't see. <laughs> I didn't put the crawfish on there, but um, I don't think they call them, they don't call them crawfish or crayfish in um, Australia. They're called something else. I'm not sure what though, but 
that's what we call them here in in our rivers. They're like little, some people call them mud bugs <laughs> because they live in the, the river um, in the mud and they kind of look like tiny lobsters, sort of. Um, my one of my relatives on the opposite side is is from Mississippi, and so I've actually eaten them. He he catches them and uh, cooks them up, and they kind of taste like dirt, <laughs> dirty fish. I don't know. I'm not a big fan, but. I'm sure that's sacrilege to someone who's going to watch this and say, oh, how can you not like them? Eh, they don't taste that good to me. I'm not that much of a fish eater um, with any kind of fish, really. I'm not a big fan of the fishy flavors. So, Which is sad for my son, who absolutely loves seafood of any type. And sushi and all that kind of stuff is just his favorite. So I have to cook it, even though I don't really like it that much. So I'm continuing to glue all these weeds that are growing up from the bottom onto my page, cutting more, gluing them on there until I feel like it's fairly balanced. Um, yeah. Interesting, but not that interesting, really. I don't know. I'm more. I was more interested in the animal um, than the page, <laughs> and just not sure I'm portraying it well. I'm sure that I will hear from the Australians uh, that watch my channel, and there are quite a few, um, whether I did it right or not. So I had these little punch pieces left, and I decided to glue some of those on as bubbles because if it dove down. Um, it breathed his air, and so bubbles would be coming up, plus there would be air trapped in its fur that would be bubbling up. So I put some on there, and I quickly lost interest in it. <laughs> it's kind of a pain to put those on. I'll probably just dump them, but they're from a different project from before, where I had a lot of little punched out parts left, left over. So there's an area here on the underside where some of the, the pencil lines are showing and they're bothering me and I, I wanted to make sure that I obliterated them as much as I could. So I decided to do some pretty serious shading on one side and I got out my Pit Artist Brush Pins which are India ink in a brush pin format so it's it's permanent once it's dried, but it gives you a little bit of time to blend it with your finger. So I started my blending. I put um, the pen on there, and then it still wasn't quite enough. I could still see the pencil lines, and even now I can still see the pencil lines. I know they're there, so that might be the reason why I can see them. But I decided to go ahead and get some of the acrylic paint out. This is probably the color I used on the print, but when it's more concentrated, it's a little bit darker. So um, I put some of that paint on with my finger, just trying to blend away those those pencil lines. I wish that I have done, would have done a really good job of erasing them before I put on the, the platypus because once I put it on, then I probably got, got matte medium over those pencil lines. I couldn't erase them anymore. So yeah, plus... A sharp pencil will kind of scrape into the paper and make not only a mark but like a physical ditch in the paper sometimes and I had just sharpened my pencil so they might even be ditches I'm not sure but anyway I continue to shade using a couple different colors of these pit artist brush pens I've decided to do it around um, all the weeds as well um, giving them a shadow on both sides just for interest. It, I think that helps um, when you're doing collage to make the paper piece appear as if it's part of the composition and not just something glued on. If you if you make a shadow around it and then sometimes even a highlight on the, paper, the piece itself, it really helps to integrate them into the page or whatever substrate you're using. So I was looking at it and I thought, you know, in these details, um, I tend to be kind of 
an illustrator type of a person. Uh, so I decided to put some lines and I got out my fine tip black Posca pen. I had to get a new one out because my other one was dead. Cut that part out so you didn't have to watch me open a new Posca pen. But I decided to put some lines on there, not completely drawing around it, but maybe um, indicating some fur, maybe uh, defining its eyeball um, and the, the separation between where the fur ends and the little webbed feet, little webbed duck feet um, start, those type of things. And maybe just, I don't know, it was just try, I was trying to do something, something to make it more interesting. And yeah, still thought it was boring. <laughs> boring. Like, what am I going to do with this animal to make it more interesting? I don't know. Um, I'm thinking about it. I'm still working on my shading around the edges, uh, trying to get rid of that stupid pencil line look. I'm just like, ugh. I don't know. Maybe I'll add some white. I'll add some white highlights. And then this is where I thought about Aboriginal art. And the Aborigines live in Australia. They are native. Uh, they would be the native Australians, I believe. Um, like we have Native Americans. They have Native Australians, which are Aboriginal tribes. So I thought to myself, since this is an Australian animal, maybe I would make some patterns of dot painting on it like Aboriginal art. Um, Aboriginal art is often done on um, natural stuff like leaves or bark or something like that, rocks, and they use traditional colors, brown for the earth, white for the sky, um, red for the, for the desert, uh, yellow for the sun, not a lot of color variation, and they often use this these dot patterns, at least what I've seen. I haven't researched it that much, but it it's um, a lot of animals are done in Aboriginal art, and they're going to be the animals that the those people see, which would be the ones in Australia. So a Aboriginal artist might do a draw, simple drawing uh, dot dot art of a platypus, I think. So. I decided to make some dot patterns on this animal to make it look more interesting because it just was a brown blob in the middle of my uh, tealish green blue colored paper and I just, I just did not like it. So that's what I'm doing with Posca pins, uh, basic colors, blue representing water. Although I wished it was more of a turquoise blue, but I don't have a turquoise Posca pen. I decided to use Posca pens because they are acrylic paint and they write over anything and they, um, you know, I can write easily over this kind of bumpy paper that I've collaged on here without any problem. They dry permanent and so that works out for me. Um, yeah, that's what I decided to do. So that's what I'm doing, just making some dot patterns. Of course, they wouldn't have used they wouldn't use pens. The Aborigines wouldn't use pens. They'd probably use uh, something more natural, like a, a wood stick or something. I don't know exactly, um, but anyway, I used pens. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed my animal portrait for this month, the month of July 2019. My platypus. And um, of course, the close-ups will be at the end. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up. Um, all you Australians, shout out to you. Be sure to leave me a comment and tell me all the mistakes I've made about what I said about platypuses and Aboriginal people. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you will. And of course, if you want to, you can subscribe to my channel. You can share this video on Pinterest or Facebook. You can... Um, do all those things which will help more people find my channel. Channel's growing extremely slowly now. I think it, because it's summer, a lot of um, lack of growth and lack of watch time <laughs> right now. I think everybody's out having a good summer and having a vacation and doing things outside while I'm in here slaving over these videos. <laughs> so 
Uh, it's really hot outside where I live, though. Just jump in the pool a little bit, and that's about it. So I'm just about done. Thanks for watching. I added some splatters and some highlights with the white pin. And that was pretty much it for Mr. Platypus. Thanks. Bye-bye.